What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to smash the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. Now Led Zeppelin's a band that's been accused of lifting, stealing, or as the band would say, inspired by other artists. So much so that if you've picked up a recent copy of the band's debut record, 1969's Led Zeppelin 1, you might have seen the following writing credit under the song Dazed and Confused by Jimmy Page inspired by Jake Holmes. So why is Jake Holmes who never played in Led Zeppelin or wrote with the band listed as a songwriter? Well stay tuned to find out the full story. Now before we go any further, I've linked to both Jake Holmes and Led Zeppelin's versions of Dazed and Confused below for you folks to listen to and make your own conclusion. Jake Holmes was a folk singer who wrote Dazed and Confused in 1967 for his debut album, The Above Ground Sound of Jake Holmes. Keep in mind, this song was released two years before Led Zeppelin released their version, and as a young musician, Holmes was billed as the next Donovan, and he believed that his version of Dazed and Confused would be a big hit. He just didn't think it would become a big hit because another band would cover it or lift it and make it their own. So how did the members of Led Zeppelin become familiar with Holmes' version? Well on August 25th, 1967, Holmes was playing a show at New York's Village Theatre to promote his new record at the time, and one of the bands on the bill that night were the Yardbirds. The Yardbirds, which seemed to be a training camp for some of the greatest guitarists in rock and roll history, had recently undergone a lineup change. Guitarist Eric Clapton had left the band, and his replacement would be Jeff Beck. Also a member of the band was future Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page, but just because you have a lot of talent in one band, it doesn't mean there's instant chemistry as the Yardbirds would soon find out. In fact, the band's drummer Jim McCarty looked back at that time telling an interviewer, We were quite stale and stuck creatively. We had very few new things and running a bit low on ideas of songs to cover or songs that we wanted to do, he'd say. But lucky for the band, they would find inspiration that night as Jake Holmes took to the stage to play his show. McCarty was in the audience that night watching Holmes' performance, and it's possible that Jimmy Page was watching too. And when Holmes started playing Dazed and Confused, McCarty was awestruck, revealing Jake Holmes was playing with two other guys. They were playing the sort of jazzy things. I thought the music was quite pleasant, but didn't think much of it. Then all of a sudden, they started playing this riff, and I thought, oh, that's a very good riff. It's very haunting, quite interesting. And the following day, McCarty picked up a copy of Holmes' album and played the other members of the band the song Dazed and Confused, and the Yardbirds soon learnt the song and added it to their live shows. McCarty would reveal Page's contribution to the cover, saying, Anything with a riff like that would be a guitar showcase. We worked it up and added other bits, and Jimmy added the other riff in the middle, which was a bridge borrowed from another Yardbirds track, Think About It. He played all those nice little wah-wah things. It's all the trademarks of the Yardbird sound, he'd say. Jimmy Page would also add another element to the song, which would be the violin bow. The trippy song presented the perfect opportunity for the young guitarist to run a violin bow over his guitar strings to create a delicate and swirling effect. And the song soon became a staple of the Yardbirds live show, and they even performed it on French TV once. But one of the strangest decisions the band made was not to record the song. McCarty would remember, that was the only really big song we produced with that lineup. All the other songs were covers that were more or less the same as the original records, but this one was different since we created the arrangement, we created it but we didn't really get anything out of it, he'd remember. As Page moved on to his next musical project, tentatively titled The New Yardbirds, he brought along a lot of the riffs he had come up with during his time in The Yardbirds, and eventually Page's new quartet, who he'd formed with singer Robert Plant, bassist John Paul Jones, and drummer John Bonham, would adopt a new moniker, Led Zeppelin. And after only a few concerts, Page insisted the band start recording an album, and he would have a big part in choosing which songs to do. The guitarist would tell Rolling Stone magazine in 1975, for material, we obviously went right down to our blues roots. I still had plenty of Yardbirds riffs left over. On the first LP, I was still heavily influenced by the earlier days. I think it also tells a bit too. And it wasn't just old riffs that Page had lying around, as he brought along fully arranged songs the Yardbirds had covered, including Train Kept Rollin', Smokestack Lightning, and of course Dazed and Confused. Led Zeppelin's recording of Dazed and Confused shared a lot of similarities to the Yardbirds cover, including the violin bow. However, the lyrics had been changed by Jimmy Page while still holding the same meaning behind the song. The members of Led Zeppelin weren't the accomplished songwriters they would become in the years that followed, as vocalist Robert Plant would basically be singing what Page told him to. 
The whole first record was not only led by Page's creative direction, but he also produced and paid for the studio time as well. And Robert Plant would reveal the relationship of the band's members during the making of their first record, stating, Led Zeppelin was created in a very crisp business-like fashion. Nobody really knew each other, and the record and the jamming was what it was, and it was a very swift session. Since the band was on a shoestring budget, they had to record the album fairly quickly, and Dazed and Confused was done in only two takes. Apart from the lyrics, the only notable difference between Led Zeppelin and the Yardbirds version of the song is the vocal delivery. And Led Zeppelin 1 would be released on January 12, 1969, and in a press release to celebrate the album, Page revealed, Between us we wrote 8 of the 9 tracks. Of course, this is a claim that would be refuted by many people in the years that followed, and some people have labeled Led Zeppelin as the world's greatest cover band, while others have simply called them thieves. Rolling Stone was a magazine that wasn't a fan of the group back in their heyday, and they published a scathing review of their first record claiming Page was, as they put it, a writer of weak and unimaginative songs, and Robert Plant was as foppish as Rod Stewart, but he's nowhere near so exciting. The review also made comparisons to Cream and former Yardbirds guitarist Jeff Beck, who had recently released his debut record Truth around this time. Of course, the comparisons didn't just end there, as many people heard similarities to other songs. And if you look at the track listing on the record, Jimmy Page was listed as the sole songwriter for Dazed and Confused, and Jake Holmes is mentioned nowhere on the album. Generally, when an artist covers another artist's song, it's the original songwriter who earns a bulk of the royalties. For example, Bob Dylan in the late 60s had been involved in a terrible motorcycle crash, and to fund his temporary leave from the music industry, he had other artists cover his songs, with his manager going so far as to approach other artists. Because Led Zeppelin never credited Jake Holmes on Dazed and Confused, he didn't see a penny of the royalties. Interviewers have asked Jimmy Page about accusations of theft, and the guitarist would respond saying the following, As a musician, I'm only the product of my influences. The fact that I listen to so many various styles of music has a lot to do with the way I play, which I think sets me apart from so many other guitarists of the time, he'd say. But in a separate interview, Page blamed Robert Plant for the accusations of theft, saying, As far as my end of it goes, I always tried to bring something fresh to anything that I used. I always made sure to come up with some variation. In fact, I think in most cases you would never know what the original source could be, so most of the comparisons rest on the lyrics, and Robert was supposed to change the lyrics and he didn't always do that, which is what brought up most of the grief. They couldn't get us on the guitar parts or the music, but they nailed us on the lyrics he'd say. And while the lyrics in Dazed and Confused were changed, the similarity in the song can be heard in both the music and the guitar parts. In 1990, Musician Magazine flat out asked Page about the similarities to Jake Holmes' version, and the exchange went as follows. Page would say, I don't know, I don't know, inhaling, I don't know about that at all. While the interview would respond, do you remember the process of writing the song? And Page would respond, well, I did that with the Yardbirds originally. The Yardbirds were such a good band for guitars to play in and that I came up with a lot of riffs and ideas out of that. And I employed quite a lot of those in early Zeppelin stuff. The interviewer would follow up by asking, but Jake Holmes, a successful jingle writer in New York, claims on his 1967 record that he wrote the original song, to which Page would respond, mm, well, I don't know, I don't know about that. I'd rather not get into it because I don't know all the circumstances, what he's got, the riff, or whatever. Because Robert wrote some of the lyrics for that on the album, but he was only listening to, we extended it from one that we were playing with the Yardbirds. The interviewer would respond again saying, did you bring it into the Yardbirds? Page would respond, no, I think we played it round a sort of melody line or something that Keith Reef had. So I don't know. I haven't heard Jake Holmes, so I don't know what it's about anyways. Usually my riffs are pretty damn original. What can I say? He'd respond. Holmes, for his part, can no longer talk about the song, as he most likely reached a settlement with the band, as he is now listed as a songwriter on any new reissues of the album or any albums featuring the song. It all dates back to a 2010 lawsuit that Holmes filed against Jimmy Page. It was reported that the pair signed a settlement in 2012, but the terms were not disclosed. Of course, prior to signing the settlements, Holmes had almost 30 years to talk about the alleged theft. Yeah, the Led Zeppelin recorded it, and, and mm -hmm. what did you think when you saw the first... Wait, wait, first of all, I wasn't paying attention to rock and roll at that time, and I had no idea, okay, they stole it, what the heck. I had no idea the song was as successful as it was. A lot of lawyers told me it was too late to do anything. Because of Procol Harum, the, the, the lawsuit for White Shade of Pale, which was from back in the same kind of days. And the, some lawyer from California said, it's a precedent, so let's see if we can do something. So it was good, and they, they you know, they've, they've been good. 
the way I look at it is that Jimmy Page took that song and he made it into something really cool. Um, you know, my version was a much smaller, um, different thing. I mean, I think he should, I wish he hadn't changed the words, um, because I think the words were a little hipper than, than his words. How's Days and Confused credited now? I think it's, I'm inspired. I inspired them. The Jimmy Page version is inspired by me, but they're still my version. It's not inspired by nobody. <laughs> just, I didn't, I, not, I'm not inspired by Jimmy Page. The lawsuit over the song really shows how not properly crediting the original artist can have dire consequences. And while Led Zeppelin has been sued multiple times for stealing other people's songs, Dazed and Confused was a bit different. No one has disputed that the lyrics were ever changed, but rather Holmes claims the song is part cover and part original. And when an artist covers another artist's song, they don't need permission to do it. But for a partial cover where they're using small samples or changing even one lyric, you need explicit permission from the original owner of the song. So you guys are probably wondering, whatever happened to Jake Holmes? Well, he had some modest success with his musical career in the 60s and early 70s, but by the 70s he had started doing commercial jingles and most famously wrote the Be All That You Can Be theme for the Army, as well as Gillette's The Best A Man Can Get, as well as countless others. He's also continued to write with other musicians, most famously working with Harry Belafonte. So that concludes today's video guys. Let me know your thoughts on the similarities between both songs in the comment section below. And do you guys want me to profile other Led Zeppelin songs that they may have allegedly stolen? Let me know in the comment section below and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.